Thank you for being here. We're looking at Matthew chapter 27. The whole chapter and all the uh, crucifixion uh, account is uh, giving the events that are taking a place around the cross. So we're viewing all of these events, all of the people's reaction, the response they had uh, to what is actually going on. And when you come to verse uh, 32, that is verse 33, uh, he begins a series in this paragraph, a series of verses, and some of them are, uh, 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 contain two verses, but he gives five of them, and they are simply statements about things, ideas, uh, things that are happening, descriptions. Uh, for instance, in verse 33, he describes a place. Uh, in verse 30, uh, uh, in verse 33, he also describes a policy. They gave this drink. It was a policy that they did for crucified people. In verse 35, he gives the guys who are making a profit. Verse 35 and 36, uh, they are uh, the soldiers who are gambling over the garment. And then he has a political thing that's going on. A political statement is being made, an argument in verse 37. And then when you come to verse 38, you've got some soldiers. The justice system is doing its thing, and some people are being punished, and two robbers were crucified with him. So you've got this, these things. And we discovered last week that these things that he's describing have no connection except as they are being done in the light of and are in the shadow of the cross. In other words, Jesus is bleeding all over these things, which is the way it happens in our life. He's, we have these things, well, they're not significant, no, but he is shedding his blood and they are being bled on by the divine Christ himself. They must come under the light of his crucifixion. I am to bring everything in my life under the domination and under the lordship of his death and his resurrection. There is nothing that is to be left out. Amen. We discovered that they were all commonplace things. In other words, there was nothing out of the ordinary. It was nothing freaky. It was, uh, but you see, that's where we crucify him, in the ordinary things. It isn't, oh, my stars, I can't believe I did that. I've only done it one time in my whole life. That's not what crucifies Jesus. What crucifies Jesus is the day in and day out attitude of my life. The routine things. Well, that's just the way I am. Well, I was raised that way. Well, I've always done that. Those are the things that nail him. That's what he died for. To bleed all over the routine every day. Well, that's just the way I feel. My attitude, he came to bleed all over that. That's what nails him. That's what crucifies him. Tonight, I'd like to go back to verse 33, and I'd like to begin to investigate, and this is really going to be hard, I'd like to investigate verse 33 with you. We're, uh, we're calling it the place, the system. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, place of a skull. Let's pray together. Uh, I don't know if I'm up to this, Jesus. I can mouth off about this. I can fill a half hour, no problem. But I don't know if I'm up to examining this in my life. To take this truth, what you're trying to say, to apply this, to bring this into my life, I'm not sure. Uh, Lord, I don't do, mind dealing with uh, things that are a little maybe off track. I can do that. I don't mind tweaking myself on certain areas. Yeah, I could improve in that. Well, yeah, I could have, I could be better at that. I don't mind that. But to do what's being presented in this concept, I'm not, I, it, this is going to take you. And so I pray for a movement of God. I pray that you would come in upon us. I pray that the Spirit of God would leap out of the pages. I pray that the living Word would somehow take the written Word and just literally it would become the physical sword of the Spirit that would literally slice the inner heart of my being and bring me to the kind of surrender that allows you to do what you want to do in my life. So I give this to you tonight. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I pray. 
Amen. Uh, when they had come to a place called Golgotha, Golgotha is, a, is an Aramaic word, and it literally means, well, he tells you, the skull. That's what it means. So they called this the place of a skull. And the reason for that, Bible scholars argue about it, but the one, some Bible scholars say that if you stand back, and by the way, this place of a skull was a hill right outside of Jerusalem, and you'd come into Jerusalem and, and turn into the main gate, and everybody who came to Jerusalem normally would come this way, and you'd come in the gate right over there where you could see right in plain sight right there was this hill called Golgotha. And it was kind of a neat thing because uh, it was a great deterrent to crime. I mean, hey, you walk into town, people are dying up there, screaming out, you know, it's crucifying them. And hey, crime doesn't pay, see? <laughs> Better behave yourself. See, it was a great deterrent to crime. So it's kind of neat right outside the city gates to have that influence, uh, let the kids see it. Hey, let them know. Yeah, you don't get by. So you obey your parents. So, uh, you know, it's that kind of a deal. So it's the place of the skull. And again, the reason they call it that, two ideas. One is if you stand back as you come into Jerusalem and look at it, the hill kind of looked like a skull. I'm not sure I buy that, but hey, some, think, some said that. Some say that. Uh, others, of course, emphasize the fact that the reason it's called a place of the skull is because, well, you see, uh, the uh, people you crucify, you don't bury them. Uh, normally, you don't bury them. Uh, they have no burial system for those people. Now, once in a while, a loving mother, a, a caring father would come to the magistrates and say, hey, could I please have the body of my crucified son? And uh, hey, they would grant that and he would be buried. But normally, it, you wouldn't bury him. So what happened was they hung there. It took two and a half days for a guy to die on a cross and when he died, you just left him hanging there. And of course, the birds would come, scavengers would come. Eventually, the body would rot to the point it would fall off of the cross. Scavengers would come, clean the bones. So the place, the whole hill was covered with skulls and bones and thus called the place of the skull. So that probably makes more sense than anything. Uh, and again, it's an ideal location for crucifixion because again, it's a great deterrent to crime so it's right there now I don't know if how much you've thought about it but uh, have you thought worked your way through the idea of crucifixion see crucifixion is not like hanging you and I get together we're bigger than this guy we go out we grab him put a rope around his neck find a tree we hang him two guys could do that you don't need a system in place for that but crucifixion doesn't just happen See, you don't just wake up one morning and say, yeah, I feel like crucifying somebody. Go out and nail somebody. There's a whole system in place. In fact, when you think about it, do you realize how many people get their job is connected to crucifixion? Hundreds of people make their living off of this crucifixion event. I mean, it's phenomenal. And there's a whole system in place that revolves around and has to be there in order to pull off a crucifixion. So by the time you get a guy nailed to a tree, there have been activity after activity, job after job, involvement after involvement, all working their part of this, bringing this guy to a crucifixion. Now take, take, the, take the situation with Jesus. See, it didn't just happen. See, there had to be a court. There had to be trials. You've got to have a judge, so you've got a guy like Pilate. But before that can be done, there has to be laws. So there's laws. You break this law. And what was the big law? Jesus says he's king. Hey, that is, that is, that is heresy. That is against Caesar. So there's a law about that, and that deserves crucifixion. So there's a law put in place. Of course, to have laws, you've got to have, you got to have the lobbyist. You've got to have the court. You've got to have... So we put a law in place. Then a judge has to enforce the law. Jesus has to be brought in. You've got trials. You've got all this going on. All of this is a part of the system of crucifixion. So now we've decided Jesus is going to be crucified. Okay, now what do you do? You've got to have soldiers that are involved in crucifixion. And do you realize that not every soldier could crucify? Not every soldier was qualified. See, there was, there was an etiquette of crucifixion. And somebody had to write a manual. 
a training manual of how to crucify people, what you do and what you don't do, and, and the rules involved in crucifixion. And of course, then you've got to have somebody train, you've got to have somebody teach the course that trains the guys who are going to crucify. You have to have guys sign up for the course. It was a second job, you understand. Uh, hey, uh, I didn't want to get involved in, uh, you know, soldiers don't make much money. So I didn't want to get involved in uh, a lot of guys went down and became bouncers yet out down at the bar. But I wasn't interested in that. Uh, so I got involved in crucifixion. And in, in order to be able to crucify as a soldier, I had to take this Saturday course and pass the course. So you got a teacher. you got the test. Now I'm qualified. Somebody has to make a roster. Oh, I'm on for this Friday. Yeah, we're going to crucify a guy. There were always four soldiers involved in the crucifixion. What we got paid was what the dead guy left. Well, he doesn't need it. So whatever he leaves, we get, and we could divide it up among us four. That's what we got paid. So you see this, there's this whole system with all of these jobs that are connected with and we're qualified now to crucify, so we're out there. So, hey, it's my job, man. It's my job. Don't, cri don't criticize. It's a part of the system. And, of course, you realize in order to crucify a guy, you've got to have a cross. You know, there's X cross and T cross. So somebody has to make the decision, we're going to nail this guy with a T cross. Okay, you've got to call the lumber yard. Lumber yard has to bring the lumber. You've got to have T cross lumber. Oh, we've got X cross. Hey, bad news. Just call him again. So you've got, you know, you've got delivery people. You've got to have a supply clerk who has, keeps the nails. Because when you walk by to go out and crucify a guy, grab for a handful of nails. No nails in the nail bin. See, you've got to have somebody supplying so you got the supply oh last time we broke the hammer handle so you gotta have maintenance people somebody's got to fix the hammer handle keep the equipment up if we're gonna if we're gonna do the crucifixion see there's lots of people involved oh can you imagine you you got the cross you got this guy nailed you raise the thing up this is heavy brother you raise the thing up whoops no hole so you gotta have a post hole digger to keep the hole cleaned out to drop the cross in a hole so you gotta have that and you realize how crowds, crowds are, man. They just come and, and there's candy wrappers all over the place and pop cans. And you got to have a cleanup crew, clean up that hill. So you got that whole, you know, that whole part of the, all of this system in place to pull off a crucifixion. See, this is not just get up one morning and say, hey, let's crucify a guy. What would happen... If you would say, well, we're not going to crucify people anymore. Well, now, how are you going to get that done? Well, what we'll do is we just won't put nails in the nail bin. Oh, come on. That isn't going to stop us. We walk by. We got the whole law thing. Everything is taking place. We're ready to crucify this guy. Got the whole dug. Got the key cross lumber. We got everything in place. And we walk by. Psh, no nails in the nail bin. You think that is going to stop us, man? We'll tie his hand. We'll pull the nails out of the other cross and put it in this guy. See, we will find, see, nails. The lack of nails is, why? Because this is not about one little piece like nails in the nail bin that's going to keep us from crucifying a guy because the system is going to operate. So if you wanted to stop crucifixion, well, well, the last time we broke the hammer handle, so now we don't have a hammer. Well, get a rock, man. You know, we'd find a way. See, a broken hammer handle is not going to, because it didn't keep the equipment up, it isn't going to stop. Why? Because there's a whole system in place for crucifixion. So if you wanted to stop crucifixion, what would you have to do? Folks, you got to eliminate the system. Come on, think it through. You can't get just little, one little piece. You got to eliminate the whole system. In other words, you got to change the laws, sell the hill, fire all the guys. Get rid of the committees. The whole system has to be wiped out if you want to get rid of crucifixion. This is not about, this is about
No, I can see by looking at you, you're saying, good night. What's that have to do with anything? Well, see, that's exactly what's going on in our lives. There's a whole system in place in my life. (laughs) And you know how long I've worked on setting this system in place. And I have established patterns and I've established a system and it all has at its core this this attitude and this this central issue and it's developed this whole system by which I do what I do and act the way I act. Well, I'm going to change the way I act. Well, good luck on that. How are you going to do that? Well, I just won't put nails in the nail bin anymore. No, that isn't going to do it, folks. Well, suppose I quit drinking. Well, I want you to. That would be great. But you can quit drinking, and that doesn't change. That's just nails in a nail bin, son. Well, I won't take drugs anymore. Well, that would be good. Hey, we're for you. But you could, if you could pull that off, that's, that's only a broken hammer handle. See, that doesn't... Okay, I won't hate people. (laughs) Well, that would be good. Don't hate them anymore. At least count to 10 before you hit them. You know, that would be good. that's, That's an improvement, but it doesn't, see, it doesn't, the problem is not that individual, the problem is the whole system that's in place. And what we're dealing with in the gospel it's not about, well, yeah, I'll improve in that area. I could be a better dad, you know. Yeah. That's not what we're dealing with. What we're dealing with is, hey, the whole, this is really hard. The whole system has to go. Not one piece. Not one little attitude. Not nails in a nail bin. But the whole system has got to die. Well, that's really radical, isn't it? Because again, do you know how long it took me to get my system in place? And I'm comfortable with my system. And again, I don't mind tweaking it a little. Hey, yeah, sometimes I have a bad attitude. I can improve that. Okay, I will. See, I don't mind that. See, I don't mind coming to a service and, yeah, yeah, I could pray more than I do. I don't mind that. Well, read more, read more. Okay, I'll read the more of the Bible. I'll add a verse every day, more than I've read. You know, I don't mind that. See, that's tweaking the system. So we're working on tweaking the system, making ourselves better. But see, that's only a part of the system itself. So what God is after is the absolute bringing to death. That's what crucifixion is all about. The absolute bringing to death of the entire system that's in place. Which is a system that's all about self-centeredness and protection and guarding and grabbing and see I've got a whole system in place that's all about me and the heart of my system is about survival but what would happen if you would so abandon yourself to Jesus that you didn't have to survive well I gotta survive (laughs) no you don't well my reputation is no it's not No, it's not. What people think about me? That's a hammer handle, man. See, you don't have to survive. You could die, you know. Well, I have to have... No, you don't. No, you don't. You could give that up. See, you could, in total, absolute abandonment to Jesus... Give your whole self away and come to death 
that he could live through you and you could have a whole new system. Which would be a whole new way of thinking and a whole new approach to life and what was isn't surviving anymore. Folks, at its heart, woo, at its heart, that is what Christianity is all about. At its heart. At its heart. And the system that I put in place is a system of control that makes the laws, makes the rules, puts the, puts the soldiers in place, guards and protects, and, and makes the, see, I've got this whole system in place, and again, I don't mind tweaking the system, and hey, we'll only have four guards, we'll only have three, that'll reduce the price. See, we, we can do all of that. In fact, this self-control in my life, this self-centered in my life is so strong that it is a survivor, it will, it will do anything to survive, even become good. See, if I force my system, say, hey, you're not going to swear anymore. I'll clean up my language to survive. But it doesn't change the system. So we take the system from a worldly system. It was a worldly system, a mean system, a hateful system, a alcohol, drug-infested system. Now it's become a church system. A, it's a good system. It's, it looks, see, it becomes, but it's still the system. Do you see that? So I've just shifted from this guarding, protecting, having soldiers work my system to a religious system protecting, guarding my system. And it's still a system. All operated out of my... And what Jesus is talking about in relationship to the cross, and it's this develops in theology in the, in the, in the Pauline epistles, it, it's all about, oh, the whole system. I am crucified with Christ. Well, what's crucified with Christ? My system. See, the way I've always operated with all of its tentacles, with all of its aspects, that old system has literally come to death that there might be a whole new system with Jesus in control at the heart of the system. Who wants to deal with that? <laughs> See, again, I don't mind tweaking. I've got some things I could approve on. Yeah, I could go to church more than I do. See, I don't mind that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm open to that. But what about this Jesus and his death? coming to the core of my system and literally bringing my system to death. But that would alter who I am. <laughs> the way I think. Yeah. My whole approach to life. Would, yeah. What was important won't be important. Yeah. What mattered won't matter. Yeah. Otherwise, just tweak your system. Have a big time. How on earth, Jesus, am I going to deal with this? you're going to have to come and bleed all over my system. And Lord, we had a whole system in place that crucified you. And that system is at the core of my life. For it wasn't just, yeah, I told some lies, that crucified you. It wasn't that, was it? No, it wasn't. Oh, yeah, that was a part of a system. 
But what really crucified you was this self-centered system that's at the core of my life that has set up its patterns and dictated and has its soldiers that do its protection and has its rules and its laws and performs its thing and has its equipment and has its... And Lord, I've got a whole system in my life that fights for survival and fights for protection and fights for I'm in control and fights for I gotta have my way. I've got a whole system that loses its temper and literally defends itself and literally... There's a whole system of thought in my life God and the only way I'm going to get out of this is not to go to anger management and tweak my system a little you're going to have to come and bring my system to death and Lord am I up to dealing with that one would I risk you changing everything the approach, the way I think, everything about my life, would I abandon myself to you and trust you that your system is better than mine? Your life in me. Greater than my self-centered living. And Lord, I don't mind having you around as long as I can control you and get out of you what I want. Which is all a part of my system. I don't mind hiring you on. And Lord, I'll do this for you and do that for you if you'll do this for me and that for me. but to abandon myself in reckless, lavished surrender is what you're calling me to. Heads are bowed. Reckless, absolute abandonment. of yourself release from the control of your own self made system are you in Well, let me warn you if, you, if you, if your system comes to death, you, you have no right to your opinion anymore. You can't ever again talk in terms of, well, I, I've, I've got my rights. No, you, no, you don't. All the defending of my rights is a defending of my system. See, what the gospel is talking about in the crucifixion and the death is so severe that it's not a pat on the head, it's not a slap on the wrist, it's not a rule to accomplish, it's the death and the alteration of the system at the core of your life. And your system at the core of your life is so huge and so in control that you cannot bring it to death or bring it under control. You're going to have to posture yourself at his feet and let him bring you to crucifixion. a possibility for you tonight moments of seeking